This week on The Watchman, welcome to the majestic Mount Hermon. This is the northernmost point of the state of Israel. Yes, Israel has snow-capped mountains, and yes, Israel has a ski resort. And this week, our good friends Yaakov Sullivan and Danny the Digger Herman are with us to explain why Mount Hermon is one of the top tourist sites in all of Israel, how it has a vital strategic importance and a rich and incredible biblical history. Hey, we might even hit the slopes. It's all this week from the majestic Mount Hermon, only right here on The Watchman. I knew you can do that. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us here today on beautiful Mount Hermon. Hey, I think a lot of people watching probably think of Israel and they think it's in the Middle East. It's all desert. That is not the case. Tell us where we are right now. This is a majestic place. We are in the most northern place in Israel, next to the border between Israel, Syria and Lebanon, in the highest point of Israel. Uh, as you can see, in the winter, it's full of snow. It's a ski resort. It's the most popular uh, visitor uh, uh, place for people in Israel to come and play in snow because it is the only place that we have uh, snow in the winter. Yeah, you know, Alon, this place is packed right now. And just so folks at home know, we are on a brand new gondola cable car here going up, up, up to the top of Mount Hermon. As you said, Alon, the highest point in Israel. And hey, tourists from all over Israel and all over the world even come here to ski and, and have a fun family outing. Yes, we are going up. It's 2,700 uh, meter above uh, sea level, wow. and we will be there. We you can impress from the beautiful, uh, beautiful view. The visitors that are coming here, it's all kinds of the Israeli uh, different uh, populations that we have. You can find in one day uh, from the very Israeli religions the, uh, people to the uh, non-religion. Druze, Bedouin, uh, Arabs, uh, Christians. But that's Israel, right? Israel's a diverse is Israel. place, a tolerant place. It's great. Hey, we're getting near the top here alone. Uh, I have never skied ever in my life, folks. I'm a city slicker from Philadelphia, but today maybe I'll get on some skis alone. I think it uh, must be your first time here in Mount Hermon. <laughs> it is. You know that people said that if you ski in the Mount Hermon, you can ski everywhere around the world. Then alone, let's do it. Yes. Here we go. We're pulling up. Thank you so much alone. Yakov, it is great to be with you here atop beautiful, majestic Mount Hermon. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, hey, look, a very strategic spot in Israel, right? The geographical location, uh, a beautiful spot. You see people sledding, skiing behind us, but strategic. Tell us a bit more why this is such an important place for the state of Israel. So Mount Hermon, as you said correctly, is a very strategic point in here in Israel. It's the highest mountain in Israel. We nicknamed it the eyes of the state. Wow. On a good day like this day, if we would be standing on, another, on the higher point at the military observations, we can see the beaches of Tel Aviv. That's how far you can see. Wow. Now, the place we're located is not just the highest place, we're on a tri-state border. When we're looking north and west, Lebanon. In back of us, east is Syria, meaning we're sitting now at a key point between Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. And whoever controls this mountain can see all northern Israel, can see the Golan Heights, wow. and of course, you, it also gives you a lot of control into Lebanon. Yeah, wow. And the idea that the Israel Defense Forces have a pretty strong presence up here, right? Because of that reason, the eye of the state of Israel. I would say the most sophisticated intelligence abilities the IDF has on ground are in the bases just behind us. Due to the strategic importance, we have here uh, several 
I would say a chain of strategic bases just here behind us, as you can see right there. And these bases have very high quality intelligence ability, radio abilities, and these guys are the eyes of Israel. They're protecting the Lebanese front and the Syrian front. Yeah, now the Druze. Uh, a very important population here in the northern part of Israel. There are some very uh, important Druze villages around us here on Mount Hermon. Tell us a bit more about that. So I'm glad you asked about that because one of the most important things to talk about when you're talking about Mount Hermon are the people living here. On the slopes of this mountain, just behind us, there are four Druze communities on the Israeli side and one main Druze village on the Syrian side. And if you want to understand the Druze community, it's all about survival. So it's a secret religion where only the top religious scholars know what the religion is all about. The average Druze is secular. Yeah. He doesn't know what he believes in. He just knows he's connected to this ethnic group, to this religion. And the second thing is, aside from very rare exceptions, along the generations you see the Druze never seek independence. Hmm. Wherever they live, they are loyal to the strongest player. The Druze population of the Galilee is very loyal to Israel, huge Zionist. It's more than just strategic interest today. It's a blood connection. Some of the wow. best friends from my long military service are Druze. And they're great soldiers, right? And they're the best fighters we have, the greatest soldiers we have in the general staff today. There's a Druze uh, uh, major general. And what happens here in the Golan Heights? 1967, the Six Day War, Israel comes here. There are, uh, you know, there's a large Jew uh, Druze community here, sure. four villages, and they are sort of torn in between Syria, which where they're under control for 19 years, and their families on the other side of the border, and Israel. On one hand, if they show loyalty to Israel, they're very happy. They're joining now a democratic state, and the Israeli government is, is investing here in the roads, and Israeli tourists are coming to visit their villages, so they love being part of Israel. Sure. But if they say it out loud, one, the Golan Heights was on the negotiation table for decades. Yeah. Right? We remember in the 90s and even in the, early two, uh, the year 2000, Israel was negotiating for leaving the Golan Heights. And the Druze say... And handing it back to Syria, if you can imagine that. Handing it to Syria. Yeah. And if now the Druze show loyalty to Israel, become Israeli citizens, right? They're part of the political game here, etc. They have a death penalty waiting in Syria. And not only that, wow. one mile away from them, their relatives under Assad's control are in life danger. So what happens there? There's, there's a game happening here. If you close the cameras and you talk to them, God bless Israel. They thank the day Israel came here. They love Israel. And all the worst thing that can happen to them is that you give them to Syria. But when you turn on the lights and you turn on the camera, we're Syrian, we want to go back. Uh, we're part of Syria. You'll see Assad's portraits in their villages. You can see Syrian flags. Yeah. But Eric, I got to tell you, something big is happening here. Yeah. March 2011, the Syrian civil war begins. And the Druze community sees Assad, see his real face, the butcher from Damascus, yeah. right? We're talking about more than 500,000 people killed, chemical weapons used against the people. Yeah. And they realize this, they understand they're never going back there. Sure. And then what happens now, nine months ago, March 25th, new diplomacy, we have that tweet from the White House. Yeah. President, President Trump, Trump recognizes Israeli sovereignty over the Golan. Yeah. And they say, one second, it's not just that we understand we don't want to go back to Syria, the world is starting to recognize that we the Golan Heights is Israeli. Yes. Why are we playing this double-faced game and preventing ourselves from being part of this amazing, flourishing country? Yeah. And more and more Jews are feeling comfortable to come out in front of the camera and say, I'm Israeli, I belong to this country, and I want to be part of it. And Yakov, if we are talking about the security and strategic importance of Mount Hermon, we have to talk about the threat posed across the border in Syria by the Iranian regime. January 2019, they fire a rocket towards right here in Mount Hermon, they continue to threaten Israel from the Golan Heights. Tell us more about that Iranian threat in this region. So I would say on Mount Hermon, we can actually talk about what we in the IDF call the Northern Front. Today, we don't say Lebanon, Syria. We call it the Northern Front because there's one player there mastering it all, and that's Iran through the proxies. Their proxies, the Shiite proxies in, in Syria, and of course, Hezbollah from Lebanon and Syria. And this would be a, a strategic point for Iran, and why? From February 2018 till today, six Iranian attempts were made to attack the Golan Heights. Some of them, as you mentioned, here on Mount Hermon. All attempts were thwarted, either right. by the Israeli Iron Dome system, which of course is also funded by the US, or by the IDF taking action in Syria to prevent, to thwart this threat. Yeah. Iran uses yeah. proxy warfare, guerrilla warfare, and guerrilla is very similar to real estate. What's the topic for real estate? Location, location, location. 
What's the top three for guerrilla warfare? Locals, locals, locals. It all relies on local support. I need to use, if you're a local, I need to use you as a human shield. I need to hide my rockets behind your babies and in the mosque and in the schools. I need to recruit from you. I need to dig tunnels from your homes to, to my opponent's homes. And if the locals don't support you, they'll give you away. Yeah. And Iran is struggling now in the Golan front to, to get a good grip on ground and bring their militias in because the locals are spitting them out. The locals don't want them. And one of the reasons is because the locals understand we are not the enemy. We are the good neighbor. One last thing, looking to the future, and maybe that will connect to this amazing place. I said the Iranians tried attacking here six times. A few times rockets were shot at Mount Hermon. But look what's happening behind you. Just this past Saturday, 12,000 Israelis came here to ski. And there's thousands of people here. We were standing in line with all the people of Israel here. Amazing. Life continues. This is the story yeah. of Israel. You see it right here. We know there's a threat behind us. We trust the IDF. We trust our government. We're focused on life. Up next, Danny the Digger Herman is here to share the amazing biblical history of Mount Hermon from Abraham all the way to Jesus. Don't move. In the book of Exodus, God commands Moses to make a holy anointing oil to consecrate Aaron and his sons as priests and servants of the Lord. When the prophet Samuel anointed King David with oil, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Anointing oil is a powerful symbol of God's blessings and favor. That's why we'd like to send you this customized vial and anointing oil for your gift of any amount. Start a new tradition in your family with this time-honored biblical principle. Visit www.cufi.org slash anoint or call 210-477-4714 to receive your customized vial and anointing oil. And join our Kufi movement of over 8 million followers of Jesus taking a stand for God's land. Welcome back to The Watchman. We are here at the majestic Mount Hermon. And folks, look who we ran into up here. <laughs> Danny the Digger Herman. Today he's Danny the Skier, Watchman contributor here on the slopes of Mount Hermon. Great to see you here, my friend. Great to be with you, even on the top of the state of Israel. Yeah. What a majestic location. I know, and I know you love this place. And Danny's been telling us you have to come to Mount Hermon. Now we're here with you. And hey, we talked about uh, it's a great, obviously, tourist destination, strategic security importance. But Danny, incredible biblical history here on Mount Hermon, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the New Testament. Let's start with the Old. First of all, the name Hermon, it implies that it's a sacred place. It's from the word Cherem or Haram in Arabic. It means sanctified, okay, or reserved for sanctity. And the ridge right in front of us, okay, now you have a military post because it's yeah. close to the border. In, mid, in the Middle Ages, the Jews and the Muslims identified it as the place of the Betarim event, an event documented in the chapter uh, 15 of the book of Genesis, where Abraham is commanded to give sacrifice, and at the end, God promises him, one day, your descendants will inherit all of this. Wow, and, and you can see what a vantage point, Danny. So God Almighty showed the patriarch Abraham, this is where he showed him the land. And it doesn't get... It, the view doesn't get better than here. No. Now, also the New Testament, in my humble opinion, relates to this area, the event of the Transfiguration. Yeah. Now, I know, and you probably know, most of the Christians identify it on Mount Tabor, just next to Nazareth. But for one thing, Mount Tabor was inhabited in the first century. And the text implies that he was in a, uh, an empty space, on an yeah. uh, empty hilltop. And just to review the Transfiguration, look is where Jesus... He's on top of a mountaintop. He's with Peter, James, and John, kind of the inner circle of the disciples. And Danny, he turns a radiant white, according radiant to the Gospels. Radiant white, Matthew, exactly. Mark, and Luke recount this, a radiant, dazzling white. And 
He's joined by Elijah and Moses, and Moses, approving his divinity. And the event in some Gospels happens right after he's in Caesarea Philippi, which is right down here. It That's makes right. much more sense that they climbed up to this sacred mountain and experience this rather than walk all the way down back to Nazareth and Mount Tabor. Yeah, and Second Peter also recounts that. Peter was here, obviously, at the point of the Transfiguration. And he says, number one, that a voice came from heaven. This is my son. I love him. Listen to him. Uh, and number two, Peter says it happened on the sacred place. And Mount Hermon, as you said, means the sacred the place. The sacred place. The confined place for sanctity. And it's just after the event in Caesarea Philippi where Peter is given the name or nickname Peter. Yes. Petros, rock. Okay, because his faith is so solid. Yes. Okay, Caesarea Philippi is actually right beneath us, Eric. Right. We should film there also one day. We should. It's another great place here in the land of Israel. Hey, you know, also we talk about the Old Testament connections to Mount Hermon. Uh, the book of Psalms talks about the dew of Hermon. It it's really was a legendary place in the mind of, of Israelis, really going back 3,000 years. Hermon and the Carmel are symbols for the beauty of the creation of God. Okay, and what a place. What a place. It doesn't get better than this. It is. Danny, this is just absolutely stunning and beautiful. We were saying, hey, a lot of people think Israel's all desert. It's in the Middle East, but no, no, no. What a gem here, the northernmost point of Israel, Mount Hermon. Especially in January, February. After there's some heavy snow, it's majestic. You're like in the Swiss Alps right now. This is, <laughs> this is Israel. This is the Middle East, folks, Mount Hermon. Now, I don't want to hold you up any longer. You've been looking forward to getting up here on a little ski vacation. So yes. Danny the Digger slash Danny the Skier. <laughs> it's going to slide all the way down to Caesarea Philippi. Thank you, my friend. Go ahead. We'll see you again soon here in the <laughs> okay. land. Thank bye you, bye. Danny, the, Danny the Skier. <laughs> Watchman contributor Danny the Digger Herman. He's a man of many talents, folks. Well, we had a great time atop Israel's majestic Mount Hermon. But up next, we're heading to the old city of Jerusalem to see biblical artifacts that prove the Jewish people's ancient and ancestral presence in the land of Israel. And the source of these artifacts may surprise you. Don't move. Join Christians United for Israel on Capitol Hill, June 28th through 30th to do your part in ensuring the relationship between the United States and Israel remains stronger than ever. Right now, Israel faces many enemies that seek her destruction. As anti-Semitism continues to surge at an alarming rate around the world, Christians have a moral imperative to stand with Israel. In just over a decade, Kufi has played a leading role in efforts to curb Iran's nuclear ambitions, hinder Hezbollah, and Hamas's war of terror against Israel. Israel and fight against the anti-Semitic BDS movement. As watchmen on behalf of Israel and the Jewish people, Kufi needs your help to ensure that Israel and her people continue to be strong and safe. Join us in Washington on June 28th through 30th to remind your elected officials that America's Christians stand with Israel. With over 8 million members, Christians United for Israel is the largest pro-Israel voice in America. Add yours today by registering for the 2020 Washington Summit. And welcome back. The Bible is filled with timeless truths. One of them is that the Jewish people were living and thriving in the land of Israel over 3,000 years ago. A Palestinian shop owner tucked deep within the Christian quarter of Jerusalem's old city knows this truth. And he's got the rare and ancient biblical artifacts to prove it. Take a look. This is a very interesting coin that has Paleo-Hebrew on. This is a Hasmonean or Maccabees, you know, 100 years BC, and has Hebrew. If the Jews were not here, you know, you should find Japanese. We are Palestinians. We grew up in Jerusalem. My business first is uh, Biblical Antiquities. You know, my vision is to have gifts that is connected to the Bible. We're respecting the law and working hard, and we're getting prosper in Jerusalem, like anywhere else. We saw that Israelis are trying, and you know, it made us like we want to support them, not to look 
on a, an identity to look on human beings and that they're made on the image of God. This is the oldest coin uh, I have. It's a uh, fourth century BC, Judah, you know, or, you know, Yahud. I don't know if the camera can see this, but next to this, next to the eagle here, it has three ancient Hebrew letters. It says Yahud, like Judah, Jews. Like Jews were here under the fourth century BC. You know, people were like, one day were our enemies, and we studied that they're our enemies. Then just like meeting them and understanding that they're trying very hard to not have a, another Holocaust. And they're doing their best to keep the law and give equality for their people. You know, it made us appreciate them more. Our hearts more were open and we saw that their hearts are open too. You know, to people in the land, even they were not Jews. You will not understand it if we don't understand that God is love. God did all of this as a reaction of his love. God keeps his covenant because he's a loving God. God, you know, take care of his people because he's a loving God. God sent his son to manifest his love because he is love. And the biblical archaeology proves the Bible. These items just open up the Bible. You know, you, know, you see something and you can understand the verse in a better way. If my first identity is Christian, I understand that God has put borders and nations and times for every people. Up next, my final thoughts on the natural beauty of Israel and how you can experience it firsthand. Stick around. Over the past two years, 30 nations have been represented at the annual Christians United for Israel Summit in Washington, D.C. Israel supporters from across the globe joined Kufi in standing in solidarity with the state of Israel and the Jewish people. They celebrated and rejoiced at the night to honor Israel. And some have requested that their countries follow America's lead and move their embassies to Jerusalem, the eternal, undivided capital of Israel. Now, with over 7 million active members, Kufi is the largest, most ethnically diverse pro-Israel organization in the U.S. As we, along with Kufi UK and Kufi Canada, expand our reach into other regions, including Brazil, we are excited about the future of this movement for such a time as this. For Zion's sake, we will not be silent. From all over the world, from every nation, we are Kufi. And welcome back. Folks, as we showed you today, Israel has everything. Snow-capped mountains like Mount Hermon, beautiful beaches, four legendary bodies of water, the Dead Sea, Red Sea, Sea of Galilee, and the Mediterranean, and incredible desert landscapes. And then there is the history, the Bible comes to life as you walk God's land, walk the streets of Jerusalem. And our team at Kufi wants you to walk those same streets with us this November for our Kufi Israel tour. Visit cufi.org to get all the details and join me, Kufi's founder and chairman, the one and only Pastor John Hagee, and some very special guests in God's land. You see Israel in your living room every week here on The Watchman Show. Now here's your chance to see it in person and experience a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel and register for our Kufi Washington Summit June 28th to the 30th in DC. Lots going on here at Christians United for Israel and we are just getting started. Thanks for joining us this week on The Watchman. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.